I'm his daughter, if you don't know that. <laughs> when dad asked me to share, I've had two things on my heart for a while. And so I just am going to kind of open my heart to you. Um, I've been a Christian for a long time. Okay. Um, I have recently, since that leadership conference, I have been convicted to my very being of that I've looked like the same Christian for a while. And that's wrong, okay? We should be growing every single day. I have been challenged. We've been hearing about this sanctification process, this process of becoming holy. And that is something that every single day I should become a little more Christ-like. I should become a little more holy every day, okay? It's important to note that salvation comes from Jesus Christ, right? And just like that, holiness comes from Jesus. It's not something that we can do. I can't check all of these boxes. I'm not holy because my dad's the preacher. I was ministering to a lady at work one time, and she was opening it up, and I tried to share with her, and she kind of laughed, and she went, well, you're good. Your dad's a preacher. I wish, right? I wish because my dad was the preacher, because my mom is an angel, that I'm just, that I would just be good, right? There, unfortunately, there are probably going to be a lot of preacher's daughters who die and go to hell, okay? Because it is about that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? So just like I needed him to save me, I need him to make me holy, Okay, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 states, but as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in your conduct. For it is written, written, be holy because I am holy. I feel like as a church family, as believers, guys, we are being commanded to mature in our relationship with Christ. Mature is an interesting word. So I looked this up because I learned from Brian and I look, learned from my dad. You look up the meaning of words, right? And it kind of blew my mind. I cried when I was at work looking at this. To mature literally means the goal or the purpose or the end for which something exists. Okay? So my whole life I've asked God, what is my purpose? What am I here for? I'm here for this. I am here to put on this image of Christ and be holy. That's our purpose. That's our end, our goal. If it was over when we were saved, he'd take us home immediately, right? We're here to put on this purpose. Without maturing, without becoming sanctified, we can't fulfill our purpose. That which we were commanded, Matthew 28, go and make disciples. We have to mature before we can make disciples. Which brings me to my second thing. Part of making disciples is we're supposed to share our testimony don't let the devil steal your testimony, okay? For a long time now, this is what the devil's been doing to me because my testimony doesn't look like Brian's, okay? I've, I was this little girl that grew up in church, and so the devil's been telling me for a long time that I have nothing to say, that I have no one that I could affect, that anybody would learn anything from what I had to say, and that is a lie, Okay, the devil's going to try to tell you your testimony isn't interesting enough, or on the flip side, he's going to try to tell you it's too bad. It's not bad enough. It's too bad. We need to tell the devil to shut his mouth. Okay, it's not our job to determine who our testimony affects. We're called to be obedient and share. Psalms 96.3 says, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among people. Psalms 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. That's us. Psalms 89.1 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known. So it's time. It's time for us to grow. It's time for us to share and our, reach that end goal of putting on the image of Christ. Let's testify together of the amazing things that are happening in our lives that we've seen, that we are seeing, that we'll continue to see here at CCOC.